Hello everyone and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Nid discovered Brooklyn's scheme to outwit Tracy and hand Maxi command of deception at the Quartermain estate. It struck Lois as a really good idea and she told Ned so. Ned stated that Tracy would never make Brooklyn's life simple. According to Brooklyn, she would either find a way to blackmail Tracy or persuade her to support the scheme. Ned remarked, spoken like a true Quartermain. Brooklyn briefly exited the room. Ned and Lois lifted a glass to their daughter. Lois, Ned, and Brooklyn hugged when she got back. Lucy met Kevin at the Port Charles Grill for their prearranged supper with Laura and Martin. At the adjacent pub, Kevin and Lucy noticed Scott by himself. Lucy informed Kevin of Scott's offer to travel to Florida, with him to spend Christmas with Serena. Kevin felt sorry for Lucy and Scott. Kevin was informed by Lucy that Brooke Lynn was back at deception. Kevin questioned whether Brooke Lynn's betrayal had affected Lucy more than angered her. Lucy acknowledged that Brooke Lynn had caused her pain. Kevin proposed that Brooke Lynn should work at the office every day rather than Lucy having to deal with Tracy. Lucy declared that she would always see the positive side of things and expressed her admiration for Kevin's ability to listen well. Tracy came in a little later. At the bar, Scott and Tracy were seated across from one another. Before Scott remembered that he and Tracy had been in a romantic relationship in the early 1990s, the two exchanged jabs. Scott continued, saying that Tracy and Lee had found them having sex on Scott's desk. Tracy mockingly remarked, The only thing I remember them asking is why I was slumming with you. Tracy continued by saying she was attempting to forget about the liaison. Why is the high hat on everyone now? Scott remarked, you're the one who was married to Luke, that nefarious criminal jackass. Tracy flung her beverage in Scott's direction. Kevin and Lucy watched from their table as Tracy walked out, having just gotten into a fight with Scott. Nana informed Ava that Ned was extorting information about Aurora from her in Ava's penthouse. Nana complained that she was stuck in an unworkable circumstance. After claiming to have her own issues, Ava left and came back a short while later with the safe deposit box. Ava thought of the menacing notes she had discovered. Nina was doubtful, but Ava maintained her conviction that Nicholas was the source of the menacing messages. Ava started talking nonstop, so Nina invited her to go with her to Rice Plaza for the Christmas celebrations. Donna was costumed as a lamb for a play based on the nativity scene in Rice Plaza. Cyrus claimed to be taking part in the scene as well. Just as Martin and Laura arrived dressed for the play, Sunny announced that Cyrus had already been replaced. Laura requested that Cyrus not make a scene for her benefit, and Cyrus comply before turning to go. Ava questioned Michael shortly afterward about Cyrus's attendance at the function. Michael was informed by Ava that she did not accept Cyrus's religious conversion. Ava went on to say that she was aware of Cyrus' continued peril. Ava cautiously asked Laura if she knew anything new regarding Nicholas's whereabouts as Laura walked over. Laura denied having any knowledge of it and stated that Nicholas would only come back to Port Charles when he was prepared to confront the people he had hurt. Donna informed Sunny shortly afterward that she wished for Ava and Avery to spend Christmas with Donna, Sunny, and Nana. Donna's request was granted by Sunny. Michael was approached by Nana, who disclosed that Ned was aware that she had alerted the SEC to Drew and Carly's insider trading. Ned was looking for insider information on Aurora, Nana informed Michael. When Nana requested Michael for assistance, she stated that if Ned revealed the truth, Michael would have nothing to control over her. Maybe it was best to let the truth come out, Michael gloated. Nina stated that she would inform Carly that Michael was aware that Nina was the informant the entire time if he told Willow the truth. Nina observed that the situation didn't have to be this antagonistic, and she urged Michael to fabricate an account of Aurora for Ned. Michael nodded grudgingly. Michael and Nina had no idea that Cyrus had been hanging around. 
Cyrus heard Michael and Nina talking, and he smiled broadly. Laura went back to the Port Charles Grill with Kevin and Lucy. Laura informed Lucy that Martin continued to take part in the celebrations in Rice Plaza. Laura also mentioned that Martin would not be able to eat dinner with the three of them. Carly identified Brennan as one of the regular patrons of Kelly's Diner, and she informed Sam so. Carly mentioned that Brennan appeared innocuous to her. Carly left to look for Dante after Sam told her to stay away from Brennan. Brennan entered shortly after Sam had left. Carly noted that everyone had gone home, disobeying Sam's admonition and inviting Brennan to stay. Carly's phone was on the table. When Brennan answered the phone, he saw the item Carly had been focusing on, which stated that Brennan was the WSB's new director. In an attempt to clear the situation, Brennan brought up Dante. How did Brennan know Dante? Carly wondered. Well, my name is WSB Director. I am aware of anything I would like to know. Just as I made it my mission to learn everything there was to know about Sonny Corintos, his business, and the people he cares about. One thing remains to be discovered. What will I do with you? Carly asked, her expression troubled. Anna and Dante met in the Waterfront District docks, getting ready to meet with Anna's interior Piola contact. Hume was hiding nearby, giving the order to kill Dante and Anna. Hume overheard Anna discussing Brennan. Sam called Dante urgently to let him know that Brennan was in Port Charles. Dante told Sam to call the PCPD to get assistance. Sam gave her approval and cautioned Dante. Sam left the call and made his way to the docks. They needed to go somewhere with less exposure, Dante informed Anna. At that moment, Hume emerged from around a corner. Hume shot Dante and Anna in the direction they were facing. Anna had no chance to escape, Hume cried, and he threatened to murder Dante. How many more people have to suffer because of something that happened in the 80s? He questioned Anna. After carefully setting her weapon down on a crate, Anne informed Hume that she had the key to the safe deposit box containing the proof he was seeking. Dant came up behind Hume as Anna was speaking, knocking him to the ground. Hume was arrested by Dante. They had to locate Brennan, according to Anna. When Sam had shown up, she claimed to know where Brennan was. Carly warned Brennan that if he hurt her, Sonny and Drew would come after him back at Kelly's. With a sneer, Brennan admitted that he had been growing fond of Carly. Unfortunately, it appears that our timing was off, Brennan remarked, taking a gun out of his pocket. Carly dropped his weapon and struck Brennan across the face with an item. Dante and Anna just happened to walk in. Dante and Anna both had guns aimed at Brennan, and Anna gave him the order to freeze. When Brennan spotted Anna, he grinned. Brennan was brought under custody by an officer. Wow, it was a long time. Ex-Director Brennan, do you think they'll invite Frisco back to tidy up your mess? Anna inquired. Brennan made fun of Anna's exposure as a double spy. At least she still had herself, Anna said. Well done then, it'll be necessary, Brennan informed Anna. Brennan paused as he was brought away, staring at Carly. Once more, he said, rotten timing. Anna told Dante that she would have risked her life for his after Brennan was led away. Brennan is correct in one regard. I swear that I won't let my faults cause harm to anyone else. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.